what is up y'all hope y'all having a good night appreciate you stopping on by all right so today we are talking about the winter conversions festival it's coming and it's coming quick uh they so they released this tonight uh it is the 15th of december um they released it about five hours ago a little delayed had uh, the kiddo tonight hanging out, you know, a little family time is always good. But anyways, I want to go over a couple little things here. It will be releasing tomorrow. Um, it is 7 a.m. Eastern time is when the uh, downtime is going to start. They expect it to last about three hours. So for my East Coast people, uh, it's going to be about 10 a.m. Eastern time when the servers are expected to come back up. Now, that does not mean that it's going to come back up at exactly 10 a.m. That's what we're looking at. Um, so, just kind of want to go over a brief few things of the notes. Um, the Winter Convergence. I kind of covered it in a previous video. So, if you guys want to go back and take a look at that. I went over all of the PTR updates for the Winter Event in detail. A pretty pretty detailed uh, video about that. We're just going to kind of go over the bullet points uh, right now. So, they'll be releasing the video or the new content come tomorrow. Like I said, 10 a.m. Eastern Time is when we're expected the servers to come back up. Now, with this, there's going to be new snow, more snowfall in Eternum. There's going to be ice caves that are coming along with new armor and weapons, skins... This, this event's going to last from December 16th to January 11th, boys and girls. That means this event's probably going to be going on during merges. So merges, I'm expecting to be handled mostly by the end of next week. <sighs> if y'all haven't kept up, sorry about that. It's been a long day. Uh, if y'all haven't kept up with uh, some of the videos I've been posting or the merge updates... They are doing U.S. East merges on Thursday, which is tomorrow on the 16th. So they're doing merges on East Coast servers, some of them. Um, our server is not part of the merge list. I'm assuming that they're going to be going through the rest of the East Coast servers after they do the first batch. And combining everybody in their world sets. Ours are all pretty low, so it'll combine into a decent world set. Um, anyway, so we're going through the ice caves there. So I want to kind of give you guys brief things on that. I think this is going to be really fun with the merge. But if you guys can look here in this video or in this image, it looks like we have two players here with different weapon skins that are ice related. Okay, I don't know if these are going to be pay for skins or what they're going to be. But we'll find out. And I don't know if this is going to be a boss in one of the caves or whatnot. And it looks like we do have some uh frosty weird wolves so i'm looking forward to that along with the abundance of the winter update which i did not play any of the ptr because i wanted to save this to experience with my guild shout out to the dark stags appreciate it anybody on kpacha east wants wants to you know come over enjoy the fun you know go covenant get over on these dark stags boys and girls but anyways we're going through this uh Oh, sorry, jeez. They had a Red Bull or something while I do the rest of my uh, grind tonight. Uh, we're looking at the end game update. So I went over this expertise system in detail in a previous video. The only update to that is they are doing different stuff with the gear score, but there's also another updated video there. Just catch up on the videos on the channel, guys. Make sure you guys hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, stick around. Always updating, always keeping it fresh. Um... So they're renaming the watermark system to the expertise system. Um, I'll go over a brief, uh, just like a brief cover of this. Basically what is going to happen, there's going to be gypsum in the world now. Uh, with gypsum, you can make gypsum orbs, which makes gypsum casts, which will give you another way of increasing your old previous watermark, your new expertise system uh, to get those items up in terms of your watermark per item. So you'll be able to make a cast for a life staff if you want to guarantee that you're going to get a life staff increase with those casts. God dang. Um, so like for me, I'm going to be doing all life staff, all right? My life staff watermark's really low, and I want to hit Lazarus. I want to hit Genesis for those uh, named life staffs which are kind of best in slot at the moment for your life staff unless you get a really good roll. So 
I'll be doing this, getting up to that 600 and then hitting those dungeons. Um, may hit a few of them before just to get used to it, mainly because you are going to be getting Sapphire Gypsum for defeating the final bosses. All right, so it's going to be another way of getting it. Oh my gosh, I am so sorry, guys. I usually don't yawn this much. I don't know what's going on. I've had a long day. Um, so there's going to be kiln stations, which is going to help you guys make those gypsum orbs. Those are going to be in all of the end game tier territories. All right. Um, I'll let you guys read through kind of that. They're going to be adding the timeless shards, which is a cra new crafting artifact, which will allow you to pick the specific attribute of your item you're crafting along with using a craft mod for a guaranteed perk so best of both both world both worlds it's going to help our crafters out there i think the market's going to see a big boost in what weapons are available too all right so they're also adding the new the higher points of interest in eden grove and the imperial palace Bump, bumping those mods up to level 66 and adding some new elite chests Increasing the end game corruption breaches to 66, which would be great. They're adjusting kind of those mobs that they adjusted before. They're kind of retuning them all. Um, so that'll be a, a good way of being able to go through like Merc Guard without having those huge issues, <laughs> hopefully. I'm sure it's still going to be difficult, but they are adjusting to try to help that out. Um, they're adding new quests. So there's going to be the one I'm, I'm just going to kind of like breeze over these for you guys i don't want to go too much detail if you guys want to see the detailed notes i'm going to leave a link in the description below but uh they are doing some improvements to main story quests that are already here uh like i said not going to read through those not a big deal they're going to put new 16 new quests in morning tale 13 new quests in restless shores now something i'm really excited about there's gonna be seven new quests added that are unlocked as players progress through the territory standing all right if some of y'all don't know uh you can get up to 300 territory standing i'm trying to push everfall up there so hopefully hopefully i'll be able to get up there and let you guys know i just need i just need my company the company who owns everfall to keep those town boards full and not you know just the three upkeep you know that doesn't help me very much all right, but if you guys are ever trying to get your standing up, craft everything in that, that city, do all the town boards you can get, faction quests, all that, those are going to help you out drastically whenever you guys level up. If it's not a storage or a tax reduction, make sure you guys are hitting the territory standing boost. Okay, that helps out drastically. I have a, almost a 40% territory standing boost every time I turn something in. Along with about a 40% tax reduction in Everfall. And I think I'm up to like somewhere around 400 extra storage. Just off of leveling. Which is great. Alright. So, we are going to... They also... One thing that I wanted to touch on here. I'm not going like to said not going to go over all of it. But they did... Uh, fix the people farming Captain Thorpe after clipping through Merkgard Cathedral, so you no longer fire staff through that wall and then le leap yourself in there, all right? Can't do that anymore. That's now fixed. Uh, and they are adding that the PvP faction where you have to kill other players does not reset on death, which is great. That's going to be an amazing addition to the people who were a little upset when they adjusted those token farms because it has been a little harder to get tokens i'm not gonna lie to you a little harder to push territories without the pvp being there especially on these low pop servers like what we have i don't come across five people anytime i run those tokens that are pvp flagged so it takes it a little difficult um they did do some adjustments to the combat uh biggest thing really is the critical damage bonuses uh, for masteries or perks are now applied additively instead of multiplicity. Basically, it's going to reduce your extra damage by 3 to 5%. It's not going to be big. You'll see a little bit, but it's not going to be a big issue. All right. I know it's less damage, guys. I, I know that, but it's not huge. It's really not going to be too big. Um, 
They are adding the new perks that I talked about in my previous video. Uh, big things that I'm excited about is re-rolling some of those tools to get the extra harvesting speeds on them. That's going to be great. Um, the additional active grit and things like that, dealing extra damage, uh, allowing for reduced heals is going to be... Not that one. Sorry. Um, where is it? It's... So... Attacks. I'm so sorry, guys. I don't know why. There we go. Uh, plagued, plague criticals and plague strikes. It's going to reduce the effectiveness of target healing by 10 to 25%. That's going to be big. All right. And that's going to be below 50%. So I think these are going to change a lot, especially in war, uh, when it comes to the amount of healing that goes out with those plague strikes, those plague crits. So expect a lot of rerolls on a lot of your weapons uh, to get these perks. All right, and I don't know if they're adding thing uh, different crafting mods in order to get these or if they're just going to be randomly rolled. So we'll have to see kind of what happens there, all right? Um, Outpost Rush, they're adding the initial spawn areas now have barriers preventing enemies from entering. So no more of that spawn, spam, uh, an outpost rush when you get and just rolled. All right, it's gonna be great. And then they are fixing the crash that occurs exiting outpost rush, which is amazing. I'm very happy about that. Uh, some miscellaneous stuff. Not really gonna worry about that. Um, there are a bunch of adjustments to the weapons. Like I said, I'll link them below. I don't want to go through them all. Basically, they fixed a lot of the skills that allowed you to go up hills faster um, and adjusted a few a few of the uh, skills here. I don't think we're going to see too much of a change, um, in the meta at the moment. Um, yeah, I don't really, I honestly don't think it's going to be too much. They did for my ice gauntlet people who were really upset with the, uh, nerf that they had a while back. They have do, they did do a couple of buffs here. All right. They increased the ice tomb health from 50% to 75 of caster's health, which is great. Um, and then in tomb burst, they're also reducing mana cost from 20 to 10. Okay. It's going to be good. They're also made it, uh, for some who don't know this, you used to be able to jump out of the ice storm, even though you can't dodge, you could jump out of the way. They now made it so that that stops dodging and jumps. Okay. Get I really want to apologize about these yawnings. I just want to get this video out for you guys, so I do apologize. Uh, they are doing the reduction for the Great Axe. Uh, just wanted to touch on those a little bit. So your uh, base critical damage reduced from 40 to 30. Kind of needed, not going to lie to you guys. Bloodlust Haste is reduced from 30 to 10. And then your Reap initial pull reduction da of damage from 110 weapon damage to 70% weapon damage, okay? I think it was needed. I do use a Great Axe on one of my alternate builds with my Hatchet, but I think it's needed. The Great Axe has been really overpowered, and you basically can catch up to anybody if they don't have haste on too. It's kind of unfair. You guys do tons of damage, and you can catch up people. So if you guys want to roast me in the comments, feel free, all right? That's my opinion on it. I think it's a good thing that they're doing. Um, they're doing a little bit of nerfs to the uh, Void Gauntlet to make it a little better. And then they are also buffing the Spear with increased lunge distance of 50%, which is going to be amazing. Uh, increased hit shape size and attacking homing on all thrusting attacks, which is going to make you be able to hit your attacks a little better, which is going to be great. So it's going to be great. I'm really looking forward to all of this. These changes with these weapons, I think it's going to help balance everything out. I don't see anything that's, like, obscenely bad. Okay? I think this is going to be all good things, all right? They're 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 adjusting some of the general AIs. I'm going to let you guys uh, go ahead and, adjust, and read this yourselves. Um, but they're going to adjust some of the brutes, things like that. Um, they're adjusting some of the expedition AI, uh, some of Captain... Captain Thorpe's, um, yeah, so we're just, they're just going to adjust all this stuff. You guys go ahead and feel free to read through that. It's going to be great. And then one of the big things that I'm really excited about, I think it's going to change the entire game for the better, 
okay? I am a crafter. Like, I love PvP, don't get me wrong. I'll PvP with anybody, any day. I'll do dungeons, I'll do all sorts of stuff. Crafting is where I get my joy. Especially when I'm solo, especially on these little pop servers. Crafting has been a great exercise. <laughs> um, I have 200 in armoring, furnishing, and cooking right now. Working on Arcana. So, it's cool to see these trade scale aptitudes. Now, if people don't know what that is. Basically, when you hit 200 in a skill right now before this patch, nothing happens. Whenever you build stuff, you don't get any XP. Then you get it, but it doesn't do anything. Um, it doesn't, like, go up. So, with this system, I always refer to it. Anybody who's played Call of Duty knows of their prestige system when you get max level. This isn't going to start you over. But this allows you to go farther. So you're going to get an aptitude number. Every time you take that wheel all the way around, it's going to go up by one. And you're going to get three different caches along the way. There's going to be three tick marks on that circle. Each time you hit a tick mark, you're going to get a box. That is going to have materials, ingredients, schematics, or recipes. Craft mods included. Uh, pertaining to that skill. So for all my furniture people out there looking for that Orichalcum braced chess schematic, that's on the loot table. Cursed chess on the loot table. So it may be prudent for y'all to just buy up all that pure solvent that you can get right now. All that oil, save it up, and start getting these caches. Or start blowing through chess and furnish all the houses for all your buddies. <laughs> Uh, get that up and get those boxes and see what you can pull out of there. Um, I know I'm still looking forward to Calcum Brace Chess. Uh, now with these new schematics being added, I'm going to definitely be looking for those Cursed Chests because they're going to be, what, 525 uh, capacity in each chest, which is amazing. Uh, especially for our people who have those four chests in a, in a zone. That's going to be amazing. So... I wanted to let you guys know about that, and that's going to be for every single trade. So uh, for Arcana, you'll get Arcana stuff. If you do it for it, – it includes for your refining too. So if you do it for weaving, you're going to get probably a lot of blister weave, scale cloth. These Tier 5 legendary resources are going to get really cheap, guys. I hope you sold them before the update because they are going to plummet in price. From what I've seen in all these caches, you're going to get a lot of them. And then what I'm going to go over right now is going to make you feel just as crappy about it because yeah, it's going to be really easy to get legendary materials. All right. Because you can change and refine 250 of any tier 5 raw material. So that's your ore, calcum ore, your uh, ironwood. Uh, wire fiber and iron hide. I don't know why they put raw hide in there, but iron hide. Uh, all of those can, 250 of those can make one of those legendary resources. So if you have 6, 7K of iron hide sitting in a stash somewhere, I know you, someone out there does. You're going to make some either some good money that first day, or you'll be able to make a lot of that runic leather that we all need. All right? So... Keep an eye on that. Hey, go check your markets right now before the freaking update goes live. And if any of that stuff's cheap and you got the cold sitting around, go buy it. All right? It's going to it's it is going to stay cheap, I think. But it may rise up in price. Probably probably I would assume it's going to rise up a decent amount at least for the first week uh, until you get that stock back on the market. People start selling it for higher amounts. I think it's going to really stay up there. All right. So whatever it is now, I would expect it to be higher uh, in the future. But also the Oracalcum ingots. This is this is something I'm really excited about. I have a boatload of platinum ingots sitting around. Uh, the Oracalcum ingots can now be crafted with platinum as well as star metal. Okay. So you're going to be able to make those Oracalcum ingots out of platinum. It's going to make those platinum nodes a lot more expensive. Platinum ore itself is going to be more expensive. It's going to be great. And it gives you another option to make those Oracalcum ingots. Um, I will do some testing and see how efficient it really is and kind of let you guys know about that, all right? 
Uh, so I'm not going to go over too much more of this. You guys can all kind of do it yourself. Uh, they did make it so that the arena keys are now, they use five rune stones instead of the corrupted shards and lodestone to make the arena keys. They wanted to separate those from the orbs. Um, yeah, so that's what we're looking at. Uh, for fishing, they just they added the fishing armor that is now eligible to be bought and sold at trading posts. So if you guys got any of the fishing armor that you've not put on your body from those quests, you can now trade. You can now sell those on the trading post. They're trying to allow it so that people who did, like myself, salvage <laughs> that fishing gear, can allow them to get the full sets. I think it's a great thing. I definitely am having issues with it, so uh, it'd be nice for me to get it and not walk around without a chess piece when I'm fishing. <laughs> um, so that's about all I wanted to go over, guys. Um, they're going to do some notable fixes. They're fixing that as off cap warning from always flashing up and things like that. So we'll we'll uh, we'll kind of take it as it is. I mean, let me know what you guys think. Let me know what your thoughts are on the new update um any of the weapon changes you think there's going to be like game breaking pvp issues or are they good i think they're good i really am enjoying the perks they're going to be adding like that's going to be some of the best things i think that are going to come from this is going to be the perks that uh new system that allows you to get your watermark up, the expertise system with the gypsum. It's going to be really great, especially for people like me who are just sick of opening chests because being a furniture guy and trying to get my watermark up makes me sick of opening chests. <laughs> very, very sick of opening chests. But I still got to do it, you know? It's going to be the gypsum system is not going to be a complete fix for your watermark. You're still going to have to open chests, you're still going to have to hit dungeons to get that watermark up, but I think it's going to help a lot. But if you guys have any thoughts, like I said, leave it in the comments below. Make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Apologize again for all the yawning and the rambling in this video. I'm about three hours of sleep right now and trying my best to get the content out for you guys. But I appreciate you being here. Peace out, and I'll see you guys in the next video.